suffer. So welfare moms, I found, were pondering big questions like, what does it mean to be a good citizen? What does it take to be included as a full social member in this society? And what are our obligations to our fellow citizens and the nation? On some level, this seemed bizarre. Quite strange, right, to hear people talking about citizenship in the context of desperate poverty and a massive government bureaucracy that was demanding that they comply with this impossibly complex system of rules. But on the other hand, I would argue, it makes perfect sense in that social thinkers from Tocqueville to Durkheim to Foucault have recognized that a society's laws provide a vision of the cultural and moral standards of that society. And thus, they tend to offer us an image of the rules of good citizenship. Now, it turns out, with reference to welfare reform, Congress was really explicit about this point. Congress stated in the Personal Responsibility Act that welfare recipients had the wrong kind of values and they needed the right ones. They needed to be shaped into good citizens, Congress proclaimed, by training them in mainstream values of American society. So, and in fact, according to this law, if you can't manage to live up to the moral code of the mainstream, then we will kick you off welfare and allow you to fend for yourself and your children without the help of the larger society. And it's important to recognize that when Congress sent this message, it was sending it to the poorest of all American citizens, the desperately poor, those people who are living at less than half of the standards for poverty. So thus, from the start, from my point of view, the story of welfare reform is a story about work, family, and citizenship, just as it's a story about gender, race, poverty, capitalism, American culture, and American politics. So to tell you this story, I'm going to ask you to juggle a number of intellectual balls at once. You can tell, right? So, but it turns out, and I've met a number of um, students here today, so I know about your mental capacities, you're up for the job. Try to hold on to all of these ideas at once. And overall, I think there's four connected points that I want you to take away from this talk. So you can treat them as your take-home points. So first of all, that I think it's important to recognize welfare reform and the welfare system as saying something about the nation's values and about what it means to be included as a full citizen in this society that I think it's important to recognize, number two, that welfare reform and the current system of welfare is itself a kind of symbolic and, of course, practical response to massive changes in work and family life in American society, just as it is a response to changing forms of social inequality in this society. Then, number three, you got four take-home points. You're on number three. Important to recognize welfare recipients themselves as the walking representatives of the most negative consequences of the changes in work, family, and social inequality that all of us have experienced. You take them as the representative, in other words, the exaggerated form of a broader kind of social hardship that I would argue that is suffered by large numbers of Americans today. 
So, and finally, to the extent that I'm going to argue, perhaps not surprisingly, at least to those of you who know me, that welfare reform was a contradictory and incomplete kind of response to the problems of social inequality, social exclusion, and the troubles in work and family life today, that by studying the system of welfare, you can get important clues regarding just what a good solution might look like.